Hi class, this is Miss Cook. In this video, we're going to go over the relationships between polar and rectangular coordinates. So, here we are using essentially the definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent involving x's and r's and y's that we had at the beginning of the semester in order to rewrite things a little bit so that we can go between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. All right? So here we have the coordinate for x um, in Cartesian coordinates is equal to r cosine theta. So if I'm given r and theta in polar coordinates, I can use those to find x. And I can also use those to find y, except instead of cosine for y, I'm going to use uh, sine. So y equals r sine theta. Again, these come straight from the definitions for sine and cosine from the beginning of the semester that utilize x, y, and r. And then here we have our formula for r that we've had all along. And just a reminder here um, that we're going to more practically use the fact that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Right, and then we have the definition for tangent from the beginning of the semester again. Tangent of theta equals y over x. All right, so the way this is practically going to go, um, we're going to tackle um, going from polar to rectangular first in this video, and then we'll do another video going the other way. But um, for going, uh, we're going to use these two formulas here uh, for going from polar to rectangular. And then we're going to use these two guys here to go the other way. All right. So let's first tackle those uh, conversions from polar to rectangular coordinates. So to convert a point from polar to rectangular, we're just going to use the fact that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So we're going to use the um, units r and the theta angle from our polar coordinates and just plug them into that formula and we'll get our x and y for our car uh, rectangular coordinates, our Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so let's practice here on A and B together and then y'all will do the quick check. All right, so for part A, I want to find the rectangular coordinates of the polar coordinate 2, 3 pi over 2. All right, so we just know that from the previous slide that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So x is going to be 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 2. All right. Well, 3 pi over 2 on the unit circle um, is the uh, negative vertical axis. And so that looks to me like cosine of 3 pi over 2 on the unit circle is 0. So this is essentially equal to 2 times 0, which is 0. Okay, and then to find y, I find y equals r sine theta. Okay, and we get 2 sine of 3 pi over 2. Well, again, looking at my unit circle at that pos uh, negative y-axis, I see that the y-coordinate there is negative 1, which represents the cosine value, or the sine value, rather. So um, sine is going to be... Neg sine of 3 pi over 2, sorry, is going to be negative 1. So my y coordinate becomes negative 2. Now I need to put this together as a point. So when I make a point in rectangular coordinates, I'm going to put the x value of 0 first and then the y value of negative 2. Okay. And we're done with that one. So for part B, I once again have a nice angle of pi over 3 that is given to me um, on the unit circle so we're just going to use our unit circle. So again we have x equals r cosine theta 
Well, r is negative 8, and then cosine of pi thirds. So I get negative 8, and then cosine of pi thirds. Looking at my unit circle, I want to look for the x value there, and that is 1 half. All right, so I get negative 4 as my x-coordinate. Let me draw that negative 4. There we go. That looks better. All right, so then y gets a similar treatment, except now we're looking at uh, negative 8 times a sine of uh, pi thirds. All right. So that is going to be negative 8, and then sine of pi thirds, I look for pi thirds on the unit circle and look at the y coordinate, and that is the square root of 3 over 2. Alright, so I am going to simplify this and leave it in terms of the radical here. Uh, Pearson may ask you for a decimal, I'm not sure. I'm just going to leave it, and I get negative 4 root 3. And that's my answer for y. So now, once again, I'm going to put those two coordinates together as a point. And my x coordinate is going to be negative 4, and my y coordinate is going to be negative 4 root 3. And I'm good to go.